Hallelujah. All right, let's get into the Word of God today. I'm really rushing because I want to spend time really teaching today about, you know, about something very powerful. We read a scripture during prayer. We read a scripture during prayer that I'm going to teach us from. Um, Psalm chapter 16. Psalm chapter 16. Psalm chapter 16. Yeah, Psalm chapter 16. In verse 10, I hope you have a Bible that you're looking into. It's good to look into the screen, but it's great if you have a Bible. A lot of you have useful apps on your phone, but the most important app on your phone is not WhatsApp. It's called the Bible. So if you don't have a Bible downloaded on your phone, you should have the Bible downloaded on your phone. As a Christian, the way I would know if you're serious is the premium you place on the Bible. It's a premium of your place on the Bible. Even though I really don't use a physical Bible again, I have loads of physical Bibles. I, I still go back to them from time to time. In fact, sometimes I just take my physical Bible and I read. Glory to God. You need to put premium on the Bible. And not just on the Bible, you must put premium on reading the Bible. You must focus on it. You know, try to make sure that no days go. So, after I read the Bible, read the Bible literally. Read the Bible literally. And um, the second thing you can also do about that is that go to Harvest's TV, hear the messages, and don't just hear, get a notebook, read and write, so that you can go back and compare the scriptures. You can go back and compare the scriptures. You must prioritize the word of God. And the reason I say so is that if you don't prioritize the word of God, a lot of things can move you. You're going to come up with a lot of opinions that you wonder, where did we get that from? And sometimes when I hear some Christians speak, I'm like, what informed that thinking? Because if you read the Bible, you shouldn't be thinking that way. You should be talking that way. And you know, the way, the way um, I, was, I was in the office last week, there about, and we're just making fun of how media creates per perception. So there's someone that walked into my office and I looked at it and I said, oh my God. And I told everybody, she's two months pregnant. And when I still said that, everyone said, oh wow, congratulations. No wonder, she's looking fairer, her cheeks is bigger. And she wasn't pregnant at all. But that's the power of media. Because once they call it that way, everybody joins and call it in but you need the word of god to be able to tell you that this is right and this is wrong it doesn't matter if the media says so you should not be afraid of that glory to god i say glory to god so i say i can worship god anyhow and anywhere it doesn't matter who says on social media they are not gods the word of god defines for you how to do things glory to god so it's good for you when you come to church it's very good for you to have a notebook you know some things you must you must have a notebook to write so they can go back either it's a digital notebook or a physical notebook you can go back and look at the things you know and ask yourself a lot of you here are 40 years old 50 years old 35 30 how much of the bible do you know it's a big question a lot of you here have never read the bible cover to cover before some of you have never even finished a book of the Bible before. You can start this week. Don't say next year. You can start this week. I said, this week, I'm going to read the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is six chapters. Take one chapter every week. It's done in a week. At least put that to your record. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. All right. So, we're talking about how to hear the voice of God. We're talking about how to hear the voice of God. We're talking about how to hear the voice of God. And in this teaching, I want to focus on the, the ways that God speaks to us. How to hear the voice of God and the way that God speaks to us. How to hear the voice of God and the way that God speaks to us. How to hear the voice of God and the way that God speaks to us. So a lot of people say that, does God even speak at all? That's a great question. A lot of people say, you know, a lot of people say, maybe God is speaking i don't understand i understand that in this teaching you're going to identify why it's important for you to you're going to identify how god speaks to you after this teaching everyone that watches this video or is in the live service should be able to understand clearly how to discern hear see and hear the voice of god first um proverbs psalms chapter 16 psalm 16 is a very powerful verse i was saying so in the earlier verses psalm 16 in verse 10 psalm 16 in verse 10 oh wow i i love i love the whole of this verse because it's just wonderful it's just wonderful look i mean wow wow 
look, look at a place like verse 5 it says the lord is a portion of my inheritance and of my cup it says thou maintainest my lot." Yeah. oh wow it says i'm preserved by god i i, I don't want to I, don't let me explain that let, let's take that look at the next verse look at the next verse he says the lines are falling onto me where you know what what does that mean it says if this is life it says my pathway in life so this is life there's good there's bad there's ugly there's terrible things happening he said god did it so well that my path is in pleasant places so when there's danger here my path has not passed danger so when there's loss here my path has not passed loss but my my, my lines are falling in pleasant places so I, people wonder why you come just right on time because my lines are falling where in pleasant places hallelujah say my lines are falling in pleasant places glory to god see what it says now in verse um, uh, it says my lines are falling in pleasant places verse 5 yay i have a goodly heritage he says i will bless the lord who giveth me counsel that means i always know what to do because the lord gives me counsel he said the lord giveth me counsel i know what to do in my business i know what to do in my life i know what to do how do i know what to do because the lord giveth me counsel he says my reigns also instruct me in the night season i know i was saying this in the earlier service i said sometimes what happens is this i would just wake up with some answers i didn't know when i slept off and the reason why is that because when i'm asleep but my heart is instructing me i just wake up and there are some things i never knew in the bible i know a verse but i never knew how it meant i just wake up and the understanding will just come it will be as if someone was teaching me in the dream i just wake up and sometimes it's an answer i've been trying to rack my head around something i just wake up and i'm like wow my my, my reigns has struck me in the next season oh glory to god i said glory to god then he says this in verse 10 let's jump to verse 10 he says thou will not leave my soul in hell and i'm reading this to you because a lot of people are here you are going through a hellish situation maybe it's your marriage that is in hell maybe it's your life that is in hell he says that will not leave my soul in hell neither will you suffer allow your holy one to see corruption corruption means you will not allow my life to decay now remember this scripture we refer this a messianic prophecy a messianic prophecy is a prophecy about christ so he says this he says you will not leave my soul in hell so if your business is going to challenge god says i will not leave it in hell if your marriage is going to challenge he says i will not live in hell he says neither will you allow me to see corruption corruption means decay he says things are not going to get worse glory to god look at verse 11 verse 11 right now verse 11 it says so how will he not leave me in hell how will he make sure i don't see corruption verse 11 it says thou will show me the path of life oh my shatter oh my god he says you will show me the path of life there are many parts in life he said but the path you will show me there's a path let me give an example let me give you this great example think of this think of this of a guy called um of what they call it of ishmael i was saying the first service you know abraham had two key sons isaac and ishmael ishmael is the older one but guess what happened this is what happened god promised abraham and said abraham you're going to have a child and your child through your child the whole world will be blessed that's what god promised abraham great but as they grew older sarah abraham's wife and abraham they became kind of they began to doubt so you know what sarah did sarah went to organize personally personal organization and brought um they made called Haggai to Abraham and told Abraham that since we don't have a child, can we make our own plan to help God? So Abraham slept with Haggai, and guess what? Like they thought, Haggai got what? Pregnant. And Haggai had a baby, and they called the baby what? Ishmael. Great. What is Ishmael? Ishmael is man's method to achieve God's purpose. That was not God what wanted. That was not what God wanted, but that was what they did. 
so you know that was not God wanted that's what God, God did so I, I know you want a business transaction before you take the loan you need to ask God are you going to supply the money I need to take a loan because it's not everything you should take a loan for so Ishmael it's man method to achieve what God promised I will tell you what the problem is as time went on what God promised eventually came who was what? Isaac guess guess who gave Isaac hell? Ishmael even till now the Ishmaelites produced the Arabs Isaac produced the Jews the war in Hamas and Jews is from Ishmael it's still Ishmael and what? it's still Ishmael and Isaac so if you're not careful if you're not careful and the major problem was this he was trying to achieve what God promised with human wisdom with a human strategy with a human plan so I know that God wants to travel but this one that you have to change your name and change your face and change your son is that the will of God also? and the key thing is this eventually when Isaac shows up eventually when Isaac shows up what will he say? the Bible says that Ishmael began to persecute Isaac he said Isaac was persecuted by Ishmael but what is Ishmael? and many of you here that have results sometimes you're not careful the testimony you have is Ishmael not Isaac some of you are in Ishmael relationships some of you are in Ishmael businesses some of you are in Ishmael location. Your location is what? It's your plan to achieve God's purpose. And I wonder what, what's going on. God says, but I did ask for Ishmael. He said, God, when someone was going on, I got, and so you are in this relationship that is an Ishmael relationship. Isaac shows up. Guess who is fighting Isaac? Ishmael relationship. So you wonder why, you know, what's happening? Because when Isaac eventually shows up, Ishmael is fighting. The Ishmael relationship will not allow the Isaac relationship to rest. Some of you, that's the problem. That's why you don't have money for the business that will make you rich. You know why? Because you put your money into Ishmael business. So the money is stuck in Ishmael business. So when Isaac business shows up, guess what happens? There's no money. You don't wonder how can God give an idea and there's no money God says by giving the money before but you've used the money for Ishmael ideas glory to God I said glory to God I said glory to God and that's why the, the psalmist prayed a prayer he says you will show me the path of life listen next year is coming Lord show me the path of life Lord, I'm a tech entrepreneur. Show me the path of life. I'm thinking of relocating. Show me the path of life. Listen, the reason I'm saying so, as easy, someone say relocation is a no-brainer. Who said so? You must understand there are two generations of people in the Bible. There are Joseph that until they go to Egypt, they cannot prosper. Yes or no? Yeah. And God will use them in Egypt to save his people back home but they are Isaac they cannot go anywhere they are Isaac they can't go anywhere the question is that the fact that it worked for your friend doesn't mean it worked for you glory to God I said glory to God I said glory to God he says that will show me the path of life the reason why guidance is important is this i will tell you this you want supernatural results you can never have supernatural results without guidance the reason i'm saying so that is god that knows where the money is he told the fisherman he said the first fish you catch open the mouth the guy said they never thought of that one before he knew what the money was he told some people he said as you go you'll find an ass he said if any man asks you a question tell them the master has need of it Glory to God. I said glory to God. So I was going to say to you, and which is very powerful, the importance of divine guidance. And which is this. Divine guidance will help you see opportunities. Divine guidance will help you to avoid errors by granting you accuracy in judgment. There will be accuracy in judgment. So how does God lead us? How does God lead us? Romans chapter 8. How does God lead us? Romans chapter 8. 
Romans chapter 8 verse 14. We can cover more grounds in this service. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Let's go. Let's read one to go. For as what? As many as are led by the Spirit. What leads us? The Spirit of God. Yeah. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. Okay. So how does God lead me? God leads me by His Spirit. How does God lead me? God does not lead me by Instagram. God does not lead me by other people's opinion. God leads me by what? By His Spirit. Let me explain what that means. If God leads me by his spirit, what does that mean? Let, let me give you what that means. If I have, let, let's see, Sister Zakiki, stand up. Um, Pastor Jerry, stand up. Take your phone. I want to use your phone. Yeah. If you call Pastor Jerry, what will ring? His phone, right? Yeah. His phone will ring. You know why? Because he's sending GSM signals. His phone will receive GSM signals. You can't call someone and the person will be vibrating. No. The reason why is that what received the signal must be what? Something that is GSM compatible. If you are led by the spirit and the spirit sends spiritual signals, then it's your spirit that will receive signal, not your head. Are you getting it? The major problem with guidance is that a lot of people think God will lead them by their feelings. No. God, he says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. So, if I call you over GSM and you want to receive my phone call, you must have a GSM phone. If God leads you by spirit, then it's your spirit that will receive signals. Thank you. You can have your seats. It's your spirit that will receive signal. Let me say this. Let me backtrack a little. And let me tell you, each man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. I know you know that. But now, let me, let's go just one step across. Who? Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He has a body. What? And each of this component of man has a voice. What is the voice of the body? The voice of the body is feelings. How do I know that? Are you hungry? Yes or no? How did your body tell you was hungry? You felt it. Are you tired? How do you feel? How do you know you were tired? You felt it. The way, the way the body expresses itself is through what? Feelings. The voice of the body is what? Feelings. Someone said the voice of the body is feelings. The voice of the soul is reasoning. So you'll be calculating. As I'm talking to you right now, your mind is working. 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 The voice of the soul is reasoning. So the same way there's a voice of the body, there's a voice of the soul, there's also what? A voice of the spirit. We will come to the voice of the spirit next week. But I wanted you to know. So what God does is this. So if I want to, so if these people are here right now and they want to call each other, if I call on my GSM phone, he will get the GSM signal. So because God leads us by his spirit, then I get spiritual signals. I'm saying so, so that you know this. So that you don't think that God will lead you by your feelings because God is not a feeling and neither is God a body. God is a spirit. So he's going to lead you by his spirit. Someone say Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. It says, For then as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The second thing I wanted to learn here is this we are inside, we are inside led, not outside led. So when I'm looking for feeling and leading, I'm not looking on the outside. What leads me is on the inside. It's a spirit. What leads me is on the inside. Oh my God. He said, Thou showeth me the path of life. What a glory. What a glory. One lady was telling me a testimony. I'm not a testimony. We're just sharing something. One day, not a testimony. He said, Pastor, this thing you're saying about God is very powerful. I said, what do you mean? He said, when I was about to get married, just because of your teaching, he said, there was this guy I was very attracted to. He was way better. Things were really, really nice and all of those kind of things. Way better things. Than that. I said, yeah. He said, I was going to marry him. But I just felt this resistance, this pullback. He said, eventually I didn't marry him. I married somebody else. He said, three years after the marriage, the guy died. He said, the day I heard the guy died, I said, I, I, said, I was thinking, Jesus. He said, and God told me. He said, I knew he would die early. That's why I told him not to marry him. He said, he had made certain choices before you met him that will make sure he dies early. And God says, because I don't want to become a widower, 
and then I told you not to marry him. Same thing, I met a lady, she divorced within the one year of marriage, just one year. I said, what happened? But you're a Christian, what happened? He said, I knew that it would end up bad. I did for my parents. That's a part of life. In your business, that's a part of life. How do you know the part of life? Guidance helps you know the part of life. Can I be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? Some of you, sincerely, you're in the wrong business. Not that you are not smart. You are just in the wrong business. And let me tell you, prosperity is tied to some things. Some of you, I'm telling you, some of you are in the wrong business. Did you notice that Lot, as long as Lot was with Abraham, his wife could not have a child. His wife could not have a Listen, Lot was with Abraham. Lot had children. The one that was staying with did not have a child. Some of you, you're, you're smart. You're just in the wrong business. You're smart. You're just in the wrong location. You can be in the wrong location. Because the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that he that tillet his land shall find gold. It is a he that tills the land. He that tillet his land. Can you look for that scripture for me? Look for it for me. I think it's Proverbs 13 there about. It said, he that tillet his land shall find gold. Look for the scripture for me. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What? 12, 12, 11. Proverbs 12, 11. Are you here? Uh-huh. Are you ready? Can we read together? Want to go? He, his land shall be satisfied with bread. But he that what? There's another one. This is not the one. There are two references in Proverbs. I know the scriptures right. There are two references. This is the first one. That's another one. The other one says, he shall have poverty enough. Yeah, twenty-eight thirty. That's what I'm going to go. Proverbs twenty, nineteen thirty. Yeah, nineteen thirty. Twenty-eight nineteen. Proverbs twenty-eight verse nineteen. Copy, copy, careful. Want to go? He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain person shall have poverty enough. my friend that opening spa you want to open spa poverty enough all my friends are not doing model you want to model poverty enough all my friends all my what are your friends doing again they are selling makeup and perfume you are not doing poverty enough but there's no reason to copy your friends the bible says it will show you the part of life hey hey he says he will show you the of life let me tell you something there's nothing that showed i was going to become a pastor for my natural family because in my family i'm the first pastor you know some people when you talk to them their, their brother is a pastor their, this is a pastor this is their family is, you know i'm first generation so when i told my parents i'll become a pastor they couldn't understand my mother said that but we're not jews why is god calling you he said, what did God see in you to call you? There's nothing, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing. I didn't promise you that, you, I didn't promise God that you will become a pastor. You know, your parents are not pastors. He said, wait. But that's my part. Just imagine today I was walking in the UBA. <laughs> Question. There are people walking in UBA that should be doing what I'm doing right now. That's the truth. Can I be honest with you? When I said pastoring, I had another friend. And you know when you start pastoring, it's quite tough. So the first year was very tough. And this my friend, he had even gone with ahead. head. His father even supported him, bought him equipment, and all of those kind of things. But he got discouraged and closed down the church. And one time I went to see him. And it was, I mean, in close the church, he was even better than me financially. I went to see him. And he said, listen, I've closed down the church. I've gotten a job in Globalcom. And he was telling me how he had money, how he had this. In fact, the next morning, I was still in the apartment. So I woke up, he had conflicts and all of those things. So I was drinking conflicts in the morning. And he said, see, you had eight drinking conflicts. Can you drink it by yourself? <laughs> and what he was saying was that, actually, you chose to do pastoring. Suffer. Suffer. He said, look at me now. I have a good job in Globalcom. He said, I can afford whatever I want to do. About five or six years down the line. Maybe seven years. 
I was going home from our old office. And they said, Son had been waiting downstairs at the gates. They refused to let him in. They even mentioned his name. But because, because of that thing, it was so bad, it cut off from me. He said, He doesn't want a leech in his life. That I'm, you know, and cut off from me. I don't remember his name. <laughs> so, seven, they said, Waiting downstairs for several hours. So, when I go downstairs, I'm going to get into the car. He just stepped out. He said, Pastor Bolaji, behold, it's my friend. I said, What's wrong? Because in my mind, I didn't think he would be at that place. Oh, make you be waiting for seven hours for me at the gates. He said, I've been calling you. I said, ah, you know that since you blocked me, I, I don't have your number again. He said, I'm so sorry. He said, first of all, forgive me. Forgive me for everything I've done. I said, what's the problem? He said, where I was working, there was a fraud I didn't know about. They hit it on me. He said, so I didn't only lose my job. Because of that record, I can't get any other job. He said, my wife is in the hospital right now. We don't have money for delivery. That's why I came. That whatever you can do, help me. I looked back. I said, eh? Why wouldn't they heap fraud on him when he's out of the path of life? You didn't hear what Jonah said. When the ship was shaking, they were praying. Jonah said, no need for prayer. Throw me away. He said, I'm the problem. Throw me away. They said, no, 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 no. Jonah said, no need for prayer. Some people will just enter your life. Your life will scatter. I'm telling you. Jo- they were praying. Jo- Jonah, did, no, Jonah was a very sincere guy. He didn't join them to pray. He didn't join because he knew what's the problem. He said, that will show me the path of life. So, you know, so they took Jonah and threw me to the sea. You know what the Bible says? Bible says, as soon as they threw Jonah into the sea, the storm ceased. So the storm was for Jonah. That will show me the path of life. This is why you must be led. Relationships. You say, relationship you will enter. I've seen people that join churches and that change their life negatively forever. Glory to God. Did you see? It says, he that tilleth his land shall find bread. So the fact that he's doing well here, Oh, my friend moved to Canada. It was such beautiful. You may need to move, but maybe not Canada. Maybe your own is the UK. But he said, no. They said Canada. He that tilleth his land. Are you tilling your land or you are tilling somebody else's land? Shall have plenty of bread. But he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say Hallelujah. So we've established that God leads us from the inside. God leads us from the inside. God leads us from the inside. All right. Let, let, so we're going to Romans chapter 8. I want to close with this. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Say the Lord has shown me the path of life. No, that's it. Say the Lord has shown me the path of life. Stand on your feet. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say I'm established on the path of life. I have found my land. I'm tilling my land. I'm established on the path of life. Say I'm established on the path of life. Say I'm established on the path of life. Shout amen. You can have your seats. Oh glory. I'm established on the path of life. There's a lady, I'm not sure with my wife or something, I was telling me this story. Went to marry someone. And I felt, don't marry, don't marry. He doesn't have nice English accents. Like the guy has um, Ibadan. He has, no, no, Yoruba H factor. So I'm not sure who they talk to. And they say that, ah, God says you marry somebody. Guide him to somebody. You know, and he say he has H factor. Are you okay? Some people just need encouragement and eventually went out. But the person just felt I said, oh, I wanted someone that when you're dating, like, oh yeah, you know, we school the long round them, you know, you know, in a you know, oh yeah, you know, oh yeah, you know, Oxford, you know, in a oh yeah, and you know, you know, that's all they want. Eventually that guy married, did a deal, and became a million dollars. 
in fact the u.s government offered him a green card you must remember that you are not as long-sighted as you think you must remember that you are not as long-sighted as you think hold on all of you that dated very rich boys in university where are they because when they were in university you thought that ah this guy that has a right this guy that his father is this do you notice it's all those boys that were, didn't have shirt and tie that now they're the ones that are doing mighty things see how short sighted you were praise God alright let's go let's go let's go let's go it says that so so how does God so we're led from the so say I'm led from the inside it says for as many as are led by the spirits of God they are the sons of God verse 15 verse 15 for you have not received again the spirit of bondage against to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry what? Abba Father. Verse 16 now. It says now, look at this. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, there's a new concept that was introduced here. It said the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. I told you last week that God leads us in four ways. He leads us by what is written. He leads us by hearing. He leads us by seeing. And he leads us by perception. I want to focus on perception. And the reason why is this. What I want to teach on is the primary way. You know, in colors, there's what they call primary colors. Then other colors come out of what primary colors. The primary way God leads us is what we call the inner weakness of the Holy Spirit. Write it somewhere inner weakness of the holy spirit a lot of people do not know what this is and they've not been thought what this is so please pay attention the primary way god leads us is the inner weakness of the holy spirit see and we can see it in this verse the bible says and the spirit himself bears weakness so with our spirit that we're children of god what is the inner weakness of the holy spirit the inner weakness of the holy spirit is the weakness of the spirit transmitted to our own spirits so a lot of you want to hear voices but guess what all of you that are born again here i'm not sure you heard a voice that say you are born again now but the way you are born again is that there was a weakness in you that you know god that's how you know you're born again there's a weakness it's not in your head it's not your feeling remember that the voice of the spirit is not feelings that's the voice of the body you may not even feel like it but in your spirit you know i found jesus so the spirit the inner weakness of the spirit someone said the inner weakness of the spirit one of the way god leads us is what we call inner weakness the full thing is the inner weakness of the spirit so what is the inner weakness of the spirit number one the inner weakness of the spirit is not a voice it's a weakness it's not a voice so most of the time when you have the inner weakness you never really hear something number two the inner weakness how does it manifest it manifests as an inexplicable knowledge you don't there's something you know without explaining how you know it i'm going to show you scriptures number three the inner weakness can show up as perception you just perceive number four the inner weakness can show up as a prompt a prompting for example sometimes i don't even have most of you you can just sense that danger is around wave your hands if you know what i'm talking about nothing happened you can just sense that danger is around you know, rah, bah, 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 bah. You know one time I, I, I just told you know i told my wife i said that we should pray for our parents and she was like ah, what did i what did i notice i said i don't know i just feel something because mo- notice that most times when the inner when the inner weakness is working inward weakness we call it inward weakness when the inward weakness is working it doesn't come with a lot of information it just comes as a feeling a guy that you will never even to explain it's always like I don't know why I feel this way. You just you just look at the guy, and the guy looks all perfect, but you can't say yes. You look at the business transaction, all the letters are dotted, T's are crossed, but you can't say no. I, I don't know why I'm not pulled to this. The 
inward weakness. I, I will give you, I, I, let me give you uh, some example. One of our pastors here, you know, when he was here, was telling me that one day he was praying for his finances and God told him, you know, I can't remember the name of the restaurant, but I told him, like, get up and go to Churrasco. You know Churrasco, just by the way, sir, I hope he's still there. It's a restaurant, you know, in VI. And I went to, and he was like, Lord, I'm praying for finances. I go to Churrasco, an express restaurant. He went there. But, you know, and God not let him go to Churrasco. God just prompted him, like, go and, you know, just for the prompting, like, go to Churrasco. And that's it. See, a prompting can just be easy. As you're going to work today, be kind. You don't know why. You will not even. It's not as if you hear "be kind." It will just come and say, "Be kind." So he went to Churrasco. And when he got to Churrasco, he had this meal. And when he had this meal, there was a white guy close to him, and the guy just banged the table and said, "I'm tired of you Nigerians. You're all the same." And he walked to the white guy and said, "Oh, why are you saying so, sir?" And the guy, white guy explained that he had a business partner that is not doing very well. That his brother was the head of procurement for one of the top five oil and gas companies so he needed a nigerian business partner that is not related to him to help him do the transaction and they will share the profits and the guy said and he said i'm here right now i have this contract for so so and so hundreds of millions imagine he's not here and the guy said ah but this is what i do sir long and short he got the contract too that's how he made his first several things of below he made so much money he bought the first car most 50 million just in a weakness so the reason why a lot of you don't hear God is that you're waiting for a voice. But it says the spirit itself. Look at this. If God wants that you're born again, God doesn't tell you to send the voice. He gives you weakness. If salvation, the most important thing, the way you know you have it is by weakness, why don't you realize that weakness is a primary way God will guide you? Praise God. Hallelujah. I said praise God. How does the inner weakness work? It works as a check. It works as a check. It works as a check. Sometimes it's just a check. Sometimes it's a green light. It's what we call peace sometimes. It's either green light or red light. It, when you have green light, it's not someone explaining things to you. It's an inner weakness. It's an inner weakness. Let me show you an example of the Bible. Psalm, sorry, Acts 20, verse 17. Acts 20, verse 17. It can also come as a strong thought. Acts 27, verse 27, verse 10. Acts 27, verse 10. Can you mention the scripture quickly at the back? All right. Well, let's read together. I want to go. And he said unto them, Sir, I what? Did God speak to him? What was it? In a weakness. He just said, yeah. The way you will know when is a voice, when is a voice, it has more details and it's more direct. But when is the inner weakness? It's always a bit. You will just know and you cannot explain why you know what you know. Paul said that, I perceive that this voyage will be with her. He didn't say God told me. Oh. He said, but in my heart, there's a perception. I, I, you know, when my, when, my, when my, one time my child had this good activity and I went with my child, then I noticed this girl, you know, and when I came back, I asked my wife, I said, oh, this like they're all children, this young girl, my wife, my child's age mate. I said, What about her? And my wife was interested because I don't really ask about some things like that. Is it well, what, what did you notice? I said, Not really. I said, Not really anything I noticed, you know. And I said, Ah, that girl, oh, she's been in several schools. Her parents are trying to do this. And give me, I said, No wonder. Because when I saw her, I could just, not that I heard a voice, but I just knew something was there. Inward weakness. So one of the way God leads us. So the inward weakness is not a voice. Let me go over again. The inward weakness is not a voice. It's not a voice. It's an inexplainable knowledge. In knowing rather, sometimes it manifests as perception. Sometimes it manifests. Let me show another one. Acts chapter sixteen verse six. <laughs> Acts chapter sixteen verse six. You, you will just feel a withdrawal. Sometimes it manifests as an attraction. You will just feel a pull towards someone. Let me tell you something. I'm close to people. By this, I'm close to people. Oh, I will just stay. I just feel, oh, wow. I just feel connected to you. I say, hey, hi. How are you? I just feel connected. Then maybe three months, six months down the line, I will see the reason why. See what the Bible says now. You know, it's, yeah. 
Acts chapter 16. Sometimes it takes a long time. I was telling, I was telling him to, after the first service, I said, maybe all the time I was put towards you was for this reason. Acts chapter 16, verse 6. The Bible says, and when they had gone through the Pegia and the whole of Galatia, they were forbidden. It's not as if the Holy Ghost told them. There was just a pullback. You want to put your money there and you're just having that heart attack. Why? Logically, it's made sense, but why are you feeling that way? The Bible says they were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach the word. Imagine this is gospel. Oh. Holy Ghost, if you go there now, trouble will happen to you. Going to preach, also can't you protect them? Because listen to everybody. When you understand spiritual things, let me say this to you clearly. You will understand some evils cannot be stopped. God will either God would what prevent you from being there. Did you notice when they were going to kill Jesus Christ? He didn't say pray that Herod would, would not touch him. He said, take the child, flee to Egypt. They let the Middle East and ran to Egypt, Africa. If Jesus could run, why can't you run? You will use wisdom to know that not all battles are meant to be fought. Are you listening to me? You will understand not all battles. You will know that may you not enter battle that I'm telling you, the problem is that some of you are in the wrong battle. So fasting and prayer cannot help you. Because that battle, the winner has been, predetermin- has been predetermined. The inward weakness. Stand up, let us pray.